Hi, this is Shadi. This video wouldn't have been possible without the help of Gaut Productions. Link for the Instagram account and YouTube channels will be down below in the pinned comments and in the description. Again, thank you. So today what we will be looking at is the techniques of Moi Boran, which means ancient boxing. Obviously, it's a Thai art. I've discussed Muay Thai in the past, the kicks where you catch them and reap the standing leg. But today I'm going to go into far more dangerous techniques and very much resembling the old techniques of Jiu Jitsu. And I'm going to compare them. So we're going to be seeing not only takedowns, but also groundworks and submissions. So without further ado, the first one is going to be a very basic yet very effective takedown finished by a neck snap. So you clinch the head and then you rotate using your hips to get them to the ground. And then obviously you can finish the work on the neck level. The next one is going to be very interesting, which is a Ippon Seo Otoshi. I call it Otoshi because there's no leveraging of the hips. It's very important to separate the two. Once you lever the hips, you are lifting them up and then throwing them. But if you do not use the hips when you drop down, it's Otoshi because you are only cutting with your hands and it becomes a drop. Here is the Kodokan demonstration. So notice the hips, they do not move whether you're on one knee or two. You just drop down and cut down with your hands. This is Seoe Otoshi. I'll make a more detailed video about it in the future. Let's take a look at a competition example in the 2016 Olympic Games. Drops on one knee and just cuts down with his arms. The next one is your classical ankle pick. It's very useful for strikers, especially when there's a lot of kicking because they are only standing on one leg and the ankle pick becomes much simpler. Here is another way of doing it where you actually block the thigh of the leg that's kicking and you only pick with one arm and then a jumping knee to the groin. Absolutely brutal. So in judo, back when it was legal, obviously many have used it, especially countering leg techniques, kibisu, gaishi, or heel reversal. So you take it back towards you and you pull down on the sleeve. Next is a very interesting uh, combo. So you see, you can actually go for the legs. He goes for Ochigari and then pins him down to go into the arm in a squatting position and rotates it kind of like a Juji Gatame, but without leaning back. Since he is in a squatting position, all he has to do is twist the arm and extends his hips, which will also work. So Ochigari, there's many ways of doing it. This is the basic form of Ochigari where you rotate around you and then you reap the leg as it is coming behind you. Also here you can grab the far leg and reap the leg that is standing. You can see it a lot in striking disciplines such as Karate and of course Muay Thai and Muay Boran. So this is Juji Gatame, but without leaning back, you can be in a squatting position, um, having your buttocks on their face, which will help. And also on their, the other part is on their upper part of the lats. And you can just extend the hips while squatting in a very uh, good foundation. So the next one here is like an Ude Garami, but without really grabbing your uh, wrist but nonetheless it would qualify as an arm entanglement so you can rotate it from the low to the upper part as you see and here uh, from the upper part to the low back and putting pressure on the shoulder here with a osoto otoshi to finish the takedown and then from there you proceed to break the arm here is a competition example of Sekine of Japan. This is the basic form where you are actually on top of them on the ground. The standing is a rarity, but this is your basic form of Ude Garami. So you 
isolate the arm make sure you have both elbows on the ground so you'll have the most control possible and you can get the tap easily the next one here is another brutal technique so you grab the leg and then you push the the head with a wheeling motion while gripping the leg and then from there you lay them on your thigh or the upper part of your knee and then you proceed to execute a spine lock this is very dangerous but in the old days and especially when there is war these type of training is needed so very reminiscent of old jujitsu koshi shigi or hip break you can see it very similar obviously when you are concerned with safety and education like kodokan judo is these types of technique will not uh, enter your curriculum and even in the old days of the gokyo uh, there was takedowns that are considered dangerous like the scissors takedown but yet you do not see something like this for obvious reasons when you are just competing and concerned with ethics and education this technique will not do also this one a huge spine lock so you grab the leg as it is kicking you bend the knee you sit on it and then you pull the neck towards you create shrinking the back and creating a very dangerous spine lock In the old days of jujitsu obviously this was used as well so here is a calf crush you turn and then from there you proceed to crush the calf and also you can lean back and it will create pressure on the spine another one here is from the old chuchitsu days this is from the tiger scroll uh, as you can see it says uh, ura chi jimmy uh, kake no chucho i believe which is shrinking of the back and or the middle of the back uh, obviously it's a spine lock as well it's very painful and very dangerous you it's also called the boston crab in wrestling so you can see it all over the world it's very efficient the human body is one everywhere so obviously it's going to be used in the old days especially for self-defense and when your city or your family is being attacked so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below please check out the links that are in the description below and again thank you to gaut production for the reference consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content this was shady and as always Thank you for listening.